everyone, Kevin here with another Wine Lab 5 Minutes. Today we're going to talk about principles of wine analysis, ideas that you can use in approaching any wine lab analysis. We've got five minutes, so let's get to it. So I'd suggest there are three things to think about with every wine lab analysis. First of all, what is it that you're analyzing? So, for example, we want to know how much acid we have in wine, right? It's very important to wine preservation. It's important to sensory properties. So we want to analyze acid. And so we'll do a, tit a titratable acidity assay. It's a simple trit titration. What's the chemistry? Well, we neutralize the acid. with sodium hydroxide. So it's very simple chemistry. We titrate in the sodium hydroxide and based on how much we have to add, we know how much acid is in our solution. What's the difficulty? What's the interference? Well, the difficulty really is simply picking an endpoint. And remember, there are two ways to do that. One, we can use an indicator, phenolphthalein, and then we just titrate to that pink endpoint. The second way to pick the endpoint is just to use a pH meter and wait till our solution gets to pH 8.2. That's more objective because we just read the readout. We don't have to decide on a pink color like we do with phenolphthalein. But that's probably the most difficult thing, picking the endpoint. All right, let's think about another thing we want to analyze, sulfur dioxide. Sulfides are important to wine preservation, of course. And so we need to add sulfur dioxides to our, to our wine, and we need to, to know how much free and bound SO2 we have in the wine. And so one way to analyze SO2 is just to do the Ripper analysis. And what's the chemistry there? Well, the chemistry there is the fact that iodine will react with SO2 and it reacts with starch. So we use, this is the Ripper assay, um, we use that chemistry to tell us how much SO2 is in the wine. And as you remember, we just titrate in uh, iodine to a solution that contains our wine and starch. And the iodine reacts with SO2 first and there's no color change. But when the SO2 runs out, the iodine reacts with starch and that is, uh, turns a black color. And so the difficulty here is really about the same. It's picking the endpoint, and that's not too bad in white wines, but we know it's pretty difficult to see that black color change in red wines. So picking the endpoint, especially in red wines, is the difficulty. All right, but the chemistry is pretty simple. All right, let's take another example. What about uh, malic acid? Um, if we want to test malic acid by enzymatic assay, so this would be malic acid. And the chemistry is simply that malic acid reacts with the molecule NAD plus. And this whole thing, this chemistry is catalyzed. It's made to go by an enzyme. Right? Malic dehydrogenase was the enzyme. You don't have to, well, for the class we have to know that, but in general, you don't necessarily need to know the name of the enzyme. But you need to know the chemistry, and malic acids react with NAD, and that will produce NADH, and that's the molecule that absorbs light. at 340 nanometers. And if I could write on this tablet, everything would be very clear. So that's, um, that's how the chemistry works. The interference, the difficulty, boy, you know, it's really a nice, simple assay. It works pretty well. Probably the, the difficulties are, uh, one, pipe, pipetting accurately. All right, so always work on your pipetting skills because wine labs love that. And two is the cost. These are expensive because you've got to isolate those um, that, uh, those enzymes and provide them in the kit that we use for doing the enzymatic assay. So those are some principles um, to check out in each one. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.